Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. If it's your first time here, then as always, it is good to see you and I hope you're going to stick around. Okay, well, a familiar sight for many of you guys that have been following my channel. One of my favourite replicas, if not my favourite replica, even though it would be classed as mid-range, I think this is simply one of the best replicas you can currently get for skirmishing. I love it. With the drum mag, it's unstoppable. It's the G&G ARP9. So, what we're going to have a look at today. Well, I've already done a, a strip down to the gearbox of a version 2 or an AR style replica. And a couple of people have mentioned to me that they'd like to see some of the things inside the gearbox. Uh, such as disassembly and what I would do in there. Um, so what I thought I'd do today is, is two things really. Uh, first of all, this ARP9, I've had this, I think it's for either three or four years, and it has been used a lot in game. And that's in all weathers, because as many of you will know, I play mainly outdoors. Um, Tazball Airsoft is forested here in the Scottish Highlands. The weather can get a bit wild. So this has been out in rain, snow, hot sunshine, you name it. This replica has faced up to it and it's never let me down. But uh, it is starting to sound a bit funny, as somebody commented on one of my videos previously. So I think it is probably overdue a service, um, a regrease. Maybe have a look inside, see how the components are doing. So what I'm going to do today is completely overhaul this ARP9, give it a clean up, um, clean all the internals out, re-grease, see if the shimming needs looking at, and go from there and see if we can get it sounding a bit more like it did when it was new. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, that's what we're going to do. Um, I hope you'll enjoy watching it. I hope if there's any parts that you didn't know, you can learn about it. I'm not going to show you me stripping down the receivers because as I say, I already did a previous video on how to strip down an AR style replica to the gearbox. I'll put a link to that video in the description. So I won't bore you with me taking all this apart again because it's basically the same procedure. Most of them take down in the same way. Once I get back to the gearbox and um, we're ready to start dismantling the gearbox, I shall come back to you and uh, and we'll work through it together and see what it looks like inside after three years of pretty heavy use. Well, three or four years, I can't exactly remember off the top of my head. But it has had some heavy use, so let's see how it looks inside. As usual, before I crack on with that, if you are enjoying my series of videos, then please do subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss any of my uploads. And as always... If you have any questions for me, any comments about this video, then do drop a comment below. I will always respond to a comment. Might not get back to you straight away, but I will get back to you as quickly as I can, and I will always respond. So leave this with me. I'll get us to the gearbox, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, guys, welcome back. So as you can see, uh, we've got the gearbox out. Just going to move some of these tools out of the way. It's always good to have a, a clear workspace that you're working on um okay so a couple of things uh first of all disassembly of the arp9 to get to the gearbox is a lot easier um than a lot of ar based replicas because for one you don't have to remove the mag release um the gearbox is removable without removing the mag release because on the 9 mil you've got the paddle release there so yeah, really simple, captive pin on the front for the upper receiver, rear pin isn't captive, everything seems good quality so far that I've taken out. Um, as always as you go, if you're doing a service or a clean up, it's worth having your rag to hand, I always like to have rags, that's my dirty rag, maybe a bit of uh, household kitchen roll or something like that for your hands. Clean stuff up as you go, there was a lot of oil on the inside of this receiver, Maybe a bit of moisture that's got in there over the years. There is a little spring in there for the mag catch, so I will be oiling that up uh, with some silicon oil before I reassemble. So that's pretty much it for the receiver, really. Uh, nothing mind-blowing to know on that one. If you haven't seen already on an ARP9, it's so surprising how small the inner barrel is. I mean, it is absolutely tiny. 
and there she is. <laughs> Absolutely teeny weeny. It's amazing the range you get with one of these inner barrels. So obviously as part of service, I will be cleaning up that barrel, checking on the hot rubber. Um, but the main focus of today's video is just to have a look in this gearbox and uh, and see how we're looking in there. Uh, but uh, again, if you're going to be taking your, your replica apart, it's worth cleaning your inner barrel. It's a lot easier while it's out of the replica. So we're going to be doing that as well. Um, I'll do that off camera because again, I've already done a video on how to clean your inner barrel. Which uh, I can put a link to in the description for you, that's no problem at all. So here we have our gearbox. I decided not to disconnect the MOSFET fuse and wiring loom because I didn't need to. Um, you can do. There's little tabs here. If any of you guys are thinking of a, a Perun ETU++ for G&G, &G, they're plug and play basically for one of these. You unplug these two leads here and you unplug that connection on the MOSFET there and then plug the corresponding leads back into the parent and that is it. That's it all done. So I will be getting one of those for the channel. Uh, I want one for this ARP9. My MOSFET still functions, there's nothing wrong with it. It has always functioned, it is the red PCB, which according to social media are notorious for problems, so people have had problems. But uh, me, I I've been okay. Like I say, this one's three, four year old and uh, so far, never given me any problems with the MOSFET. But I want the Perrin ETU++ because I'm going to do some work with this particular ARP anyway. Okay, so let's get into disassembly. Now, it's a bit unusual on this one. I don't usually come across this. Usually, when you're taking apart a gearbox, the screws are on this side, the opposite side to the selector plate. Um, but for some reason, on the G&G &G one, the screws are on the same side as the selector plate, but the theory is just the same. Um, we should be able to take it down without any differences. <laughs> so that is what we shall do. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, first of all, we're going to be undoing all these screws around the outside of the gearbox here. They all need to come out and then we'll go from there. Now, one thing to note that I always note when taking these screws out, make sure you get a good solid fit with your posi drive screwdriver bit, or screwdriver, whatever you might be using. I'm using individual bits here. You don't want to round out these screws and you want a good positive fit to keep them in good nick. These screws do seem good quality. Now, the normal lay of the land, as it were, on these screws is you'll have small screws along the top, and then these screws here should all be the same length, but we'll check that out as we go, okay? I will come back to you, speed this bit up, um, because you don't want to be watching me take all these screws out, I'm sure. Right, okay guys, that's all the screws out. So we have the screws out. There's nothing in theory holding the gearbox together anymore. Um, so the trick now is, is to try and hold the, uh, the spring guide in the back. I like to use um, a hole punch if it'll fit, which it does. That'll hold it in place, but if you don't have a hole punch, Use a small screwdriver, anything that you can get pressure and take the pressure off that spring as you open the case, okay? So, we'll go with my trusty hole punch because that gets used for everything. And then, just start to ease the box apart. You can start at the front, you can start at the rear, it doesn't really matter. I have noticed there is a small seal on this one which I'm assuming is for the warranty, so we'll get rid of that sticker. There you go. Which could be holding it together. Now you can start prying this from wherever you prefer, just make sure to keep pressure on the springy bits. And then ease your spring out. Like so. Once that is out, you should be good to remove the shell. Like so. 
Okay, so that's our shells apart. Now, you see, this is a problem with the way this goes together that does my nut. You've got the, you've got the spring there, and all the springs are upside down because you have to put them in this side when you put it together. So what we're going to have to do is, is reverse everything over and put it all back. Now, if you're seeing what I'm seeing here, I'll be honest with you, doesn't look too bad in there, does it? Uh, there's a lot of insulation over the, the wire there running up under the motor. Looks like there's been a little bit of rubbing, which is not good. Uh, but on the whole, not too bad at all. It looks okay. Don't want to lose this spring. That's for your anti-reversal latch, which is here. Obviously, everything's upside down. I, to be fair, guys, if I was doing this again, I think I'd get the screws out, flip it over the way you'd normally do it, so you'd have the selector plate the other way around, and then I'd take it out. Um, doesn't really matter, I suppose. Everything's fallen out as such. Um, but yeah, you could flip it over. So, whichever way you want to take it apart, it really doesn't matter. Less likely to have things flicking out like that if you do it the other way, I suppose. So you live and learn. But most gearboxes I come across, it's the other way around. Your selector plate is not the side where you're screwing your screws in. So it'll be the right way up. But normally you want everything in here for reassembly. But I will show you that for reassembly. Okay, so what do we do first then? Well, let's remove the spring. So our main spring... It's a strong spring. We've not got a burring spring guide, but we have got a metal spring guide, which, have a quick look at the tabs. The tabs look okay, no marks there, no lubrication on that guide, which we might add a bit of lubrication. The spring, the spring is in good condition. You wanna check for cracks, make sure it's not split anywhere. Mm, yeah, that spring looks all right, so have a check of that. Now, next thing we'll do, is we'll take the nozzle and tappet plate and cylinder assembly out and we'll have a check of those so because that's already come off due to the way we've took the gearbox apart it's not majorly a problem i'll tell you what we'll do we'll flip this all over so it's in the box in the correct order of what it should be uh, or are we just taking it out we're just going to take it out aren't we so thing to be sure of here is is that you get any shims that you want because you don't want to lose any shoes see how there's a shim there i don't know if you can make that out on camera but that little shim there we need to make sure that goes back unless we're going to be re-shimming of course we want to make sure that that goes back on the gear that it's off which i am struggling to get it here there we go so that appears to have come off the bevel gear which makes contact with the pinion and the spur so we'll put that back on there so we don't lose that shim so let's take the spur gear out keep the shim on that's on there you can see the shim you can also see that the shims here we want to make sure these shims go back on the side that they were at so that we don't have to do a new shim job on it so we'll put that back on there, like so. For now anyway, we shall take the anti-reversal latch out. And we shall take the sector gear out. Again, checking for shims, which as you can probably see, there is a shim here. Which would go on this shaft here so put that shim back on there keep your shims nice and safe you don't want to lose any shims otherwise you're going to be on a re-shimming mission and if you've shimmed once already that's not going to be much fun no shim there okay right okay so that's the gears out so we've got the shims on the gears we've taken those out Next thing you want to take out is your cylinder, tappet plate, and nozzle assembly, and cylinder head. So we'll take all of that out. We can examine those components and give them a clean up. Don't lose any of your springs, guys. You're going to need all these springs, all these parts. Right, so that shell's ready for cleaning now. 
A um, couple of things to check, I suppose. Again, making sure we don't lose any shims. Examine your gears. Um, that one looks all right, to be honest. You want to check that the teeth aren't worn, badly worn, no metal filings, nothing chewed up in there. So check each of your gears in turn, making sure not to lose shims. Unusual set to gear on this one. It's, it's kind of chamfered off, but there's a little bit of scrape in there. Looks like something's been catching, but the teeth don't look too bad. So I think we'll get away with keeping these gears as is. And then lastly, the spur gear. Again, very spurring use of grease in here, so that's nice. There's a bit of shininess on the spur gear. Maybe a little bit tight on the shimming. So we might have to re-shim here, guys. But, um, yeah, the, the gears are still serviceable. They're still usable. So they're not worn out, which is the main thing. We're not losing teeth. So the gears are okay. This is where I mentioned about having a bit of kitchen roll comes in handy. Clean that gear grease off our gloves so we're not getting it all over everything else. Okay. Right, so next up we'll have a look at the piston. I can have a look at the tappet plate, seeing how it's dropped off anyway. Tappet plate shows a bit of evidence of wear, but it also looks like G&G have applied grease to it. Which is unusual, they don't normally do that. Um, but obviously we'll clean that off anyway as part of the service. I'm going to give that a good clean. Um, it's still in one piece, it's still solid. There's no cracks in it. Not got excessive wear that you wouldn't expect over a few years of use. So we can still serviceable on that one. The piston itself. Okay, we'll have a look at the teeth on the piston. Now, as you would expect, I don't know if you can make it out on camera, but this section here is your pickup tooth, and uh, that does show signs of wear. Only a little bit though, not a lot. So it is wearing, but it's, it's worn quite well. Um, so that's not bad at all. And the other teeth, apart from a bit of grease on them, are okay. So the piston's still okay. The piston head has no damage to it. The O-ring is still supple. You want to check that, make sure that's not got any tears in it and it's still supple. Make sure the rails are in one piece, no cracks in the piston. Everything looks good on that piston. So that's still serviceable. Could be worth changing it, but I don't think I'm gonna bother. Uh, the pickup tube still got plenty of meat on it. So I think we're okay with that for now. It looks like quite a substantial pickup tooth. It's not breaking off. It is wearing and it is gonna wear out eventually as they all do, unless they're metal. Um, but that one looks all right to me. The nozzle, which is this part, doesn't appear to have an O-ring in it. You just check in with this that it's not too chewed up, not damaged, which it doesn't appear to be. Looks okay. So we'll get away with that. The cylinder head, which is just a standard plastic cylinder head, that looks all right. So do a quick test on air seal. I've heard that notoriously the air seal on these is bad. Which it is. Very bad. That's a bit of a bit of a leak there. Yeah, so it's not, it's not got the best air seal in the world on it. Not really bad, but uh, not, not the best in the world. <laughs> but we can, we can live with it for now until we start doing our upgrades. So then the gearbox shell itself. Obviously you've got a few bits of muck you can see in there, which has probably come off the plastic components wearing steadily over time. Uh, there might be the odd iron filing in there where the metal's warm, we don't want any of that. So we're gonna clean these shells out. I use degreaser, avoiding plastic components with degreaser because degreaser and plastic doesn't go together particularly well. And then clean them out and then we'll apply fresh grease. We'll degrease the gears as well. Give them a good clean with my toothbrush that I use, an old toothbrush. I think a lot of people that work on any kind of mechanical equipment have an old toothbrush knocking about. And then of course we have the trigger, um, metal safety bar, that's nice, 
got your ETU, your electronic trigger unit. We're not going to play with that. I'm quite happy with that trigger unit as it is. You want to check the front of your gearbox shell for cracks. Specific areas where these can crack is in the corners here at the front. I have known them crack at the side here. Um, but this gearbox does seem to be tip top. I haven't got any cracks in there at all. So that's great. So if we haven't got cracks in the gearbox, we are good. And that's, that's the main thing. So you check the whole gearbox for cracks. And to me, guys, if you wanted, if you're doing any rewiring work or anything like that, you can take all the wiring out if you like. Um, take the cutoff switch and the selector plate off. I don't need to do any of that, guys, because all I'm doing is a bit of cleaning. Um, so I, I just don't need to do it. And if you don't need to do it, then why start fiddling with bits you don't need to fiddle with? If you were going to change any of these components, that's easy enough to do anyway. You can flick the trigger out. It's a bit of a pain to get back in, but not impossible. Uh, but for me, all I'm doing is giving this clean up and then putting it back together as it was. I'm not doing any upgrades today. And I just thought I'd take you guys along with me to show you what these things look like. People are going to have you convinced that these guns are going to break down. Some do, if you're unlucky. Um, but as you can see, looking at most of that, even with a plastic piston, this has had thousands of rounds through it. And on the whole, the piston really doesn't look that bad. It looks fine. It's still serviceable. It's going to wear out eventually. They all do. But everything in there, to me, is still serviceable. They just show signs of use. So there you go guys, you don't need to worry too bad, they just look a bit dirty. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give these a clean up, I'm just going to spray the grease on them, give them a scrub out, same with these, these uh, cogs here, uh, the gears, and every other component's going to get a clean and a wipe down, and then I'm going to apply new grease, and then I'll show you how we put it back together, and, and then we'll go from there. So bear with me guys while I give everything a clean up, and then I'll come back to you, okay? Right guys, well that's us all cleaned up with the trusty toothbrush. <laughs> uh, let's move that out of the way. Right, so everything now is pretty clean and ready to go. Now, the next thing I like to have handy, and remember I'm not re-shimming, um, I'm just going to put everything back as it were, but cleaned and then re-greased and all looking pretty hopefully <laughs> now i like to work on this side of the gearbox shell with the trigger facing up sometimes the trigger won't stay put like that um if it does happy days um the other thing you might have a problem with is the anti-reversal latch but we'll get back to that when we start doing reassembly now different people have different ways of greasing up the gearboxes now me, I like to grease my gears, and uh, the grease I use is uh, synthetic grease, um, super lube is very good. Now there's many ways of doing it, but I find the best way of doing it is with your finger. And uh, what you do is you take gear, now with the spare gear, with it coming into contact potentially with the gearbox, I like to put a good smear around the bottom. But don't go ultra crazy on it, just get a good smear in the teeth all the way around, making sure you don't lose those shims we talked about. Now if you want to put a smear in around the top, you can do. And remember, I'm putting like a paper, not even a paper thin smear in here. The main thing you want to get it on is the teeth. So just a dab of the finger, very little grease on my hand and I'm getting it in the teeth. Now some people will say that you need to put more on. Some people say that you have to put less on. <sighs> Remember if there's too much grease, that grease is gonna go flying around inside the gearbox. If there isn't enough grease, then that grease is not gonna do the job that you want it to do, which is protect the metal on metal contact and stop premature wear. So you do want to get a good smear of grease onto the teeth. And where the spur gear is concerned, I like to smear a very light coating on the top and bottom of the gear. You don't have to, uh, but that's just what I like to do. And then for all the other gears, you're pretty much going to do exactly the same thing. Now, 
Nice. So we've got a nice coating of grease on there. As you can see, you can barely see the grease on it, just a tiny amount. One thing I, I did forget to mention is your, your um, pinion gear on your motor. Make sure you check the gear on top of the motor, make sure that's not worn out as well. And don't forget to apply a little bit of grease to that as well. So always have your rag handy so you can clean your hands off. Uh, so when we say the pinion gear, we're on about this one. You want to give that a clean up, check there's no broken teeth on that, it's not too badly worn. And then also grease that as well before it goes back in. Um, some people don't, like I say, some people do. So that's your gears. So you're going to be putting Teflon or synthetic grease. Super Lube is good on your gears, your metal to metal components. Now on your plastics, some people don't do it, but I like to apply a little bit of silicon grease, which I use the Abbey silicon grease. This grease is safe for use on plastics, which is why I like to use it. Put a big dollop of that on your finger. I like to smear a bit without getting it inside the nozzle on my nozzle. It can help with air seal and it also helps keep any o-rings you might have inside lubricated. It stops them getting dry. Now as well as that I like to put a smearing of this inside my piston. All the way inside my piston and then that's also going to help to lubricate the o-ring that's on the piston. Now obviously you don't have to do this, I know people are going to start screaming saying that this grease is going to get thrown into the hop chamber and affect hop up. That is a possibility, I won't deny it, uh, but I've never had any issues with that. I like to do belts and braces, so I also like to apply a little bit of this silicon grease to the o-ring on the piston, just to keep it well lubed and stop it drying out that grease is probably going to make its way inside again not the end of the world and then finally i like to rub a bit of grease onto the sides of the piston rails try and get some in there just so that it, it, it helps really it just helps stop it wearing out prematurely it's tacky so it's not going to aid in speed um but it shouldn't have any adverse effects. And as I say, I'd rather have a little bit of lubrication on my rails. The teeth themselves, I don't bother lubricating because there'll be lubrication on the sector gear and also it's plastic on metal. So lubrication becomes a minimum issue on that. Your tappet plate, you don't need to lubricate, but if you did want to rub a smear of this silicon grease down the sides of it, it won't hurt. It certainly won't do any harm. It's probably going to end up with grease on it anyway by the nature of how the gearbox works. But if you want to put a little bit on to aid with movement, then you can do. That won't cause any harm. And then that is pretty much everything lubricated up. Some people like to put a bit of lube on the spring. I myself don't bother. I find it unnecessary. Um, can help with twang. What I do like to do though is put a smear in of grease on my spring guide. Again, you don't have to, but uh, I like to do it. I find that it, it helps with the twang. Um, probably put a bit too much on there, so clean my hands a bit and then just rub a bit off. There we go. So that's just got a very thin smear of grease on it now. Okay, so bear with me while I grease up these other gears and then we shall look to reassemble the gearbox and that's all done. Okay, bear with me. Okay guys, um, a bit fiddly to do, but we've got to get the uh, anti-reversal latch back in. Which means we've got to put this spring on. Not the best job in the world, especially in gloves. Gets a bit uh, fiddly. But we should be okay. Right, so once your latch is in, I hope you can see what I'm doing there. Hold the latch back and then 
drop your bevel gear into place without losing the shim and then hopefully it'll stay put which it has and remember it should only go one way but enable it to turn there you go so that's that's your gears back in greased uh, if you want to put a dab of grease on your bearings you can do it won't hurt like I say, you don't have to, but, uh, you know, if you want to be fully covered, then just put a light grease in on your bearings, and that should be fine. And as you can see, there's a lot less grease in there now than there were before. Okay. So now I clean off my gloves, <laughs> as I'm going to be touching clean components. Now we can try and put this back together. You're going to need the spring off your tap plate. As you can see, it only go one way. It fits on there, so it goes like that. Your tap it plate is going to go like that. If that makes sense. So basically, the flat part of the spring goes on the bottom of the hook there. And then you're going to have to put this all back together, all as one unit. It is much easier to do it with the piston in. So that's how we'll do it. Now your tap it plate will latch onto the bottom of your nozzle like that and then it should move it as that's what it's going to do. And then holding all of this together which means you need about 15 pairs of fingers. <laughs> uh, I would recommend putting your piston in at this point it just makes it easier for assembly. And then we're going to put the whole assembly in place gently does it it should just slot in once that's in we then need to get this spring over the top of this post here okay guys change the screwdriver that's where these little technical screwdrivers come in handy there we go i say that and then i managed to get it on so that's that spring on Okay, so once that spring is on, you should be getting some bit light when all the cogs are in. Okay, now comes the really tricky bit. You get a piston in a position, like so. Make sure it's on the rail. Make sure our cables aren't going to get pinched. Get our spring guide, which is currently covered in grease. Put the spring back on and get in a position where you're ready to put this gearbox back together. Okay, so once everything's nice and flat, seated where it should be, we should be in a position where we can start thinking about putting the gearbox back together. Now, there's no straightforward way of doing this, I'm afraid. We've got to get this shell onto here while holding everything in place which is no easy feat this is where you need a pry tool make sure your wires are safely out of the way and not going to get pinched and then we try and jam the spring back in As I said, not easy. Some people have different techniques. This spring is particularly hard. Right, once you've got everything in, you can then think about squeezing your shell back on. Right, now at this point, you've got to try and line up everything so that it will go back together. Okay guys, right, sorry about that, that seemed fiddlier than it ought to have been normally. So that is our gearbox back together. Keep tight pressure on it because obviously there's no screws holding it together at the moment. Now what I would then look to do 
is uh, get this back together. Get the screws in, get it sealed up, and then nothing's going to go firing anywhere. Normally I'll start with one of the long screws here at the front, because that's going to be load bearing, it should hold it tight. So, get that in, holding the gearbox closed at the front, while keeping pressure on it guys. Otherwise you're going to have it potentially throwing bits all over the place, which we don't want to happen. Right, so we get that one in, and then we get one of the big ones in at the back. Which will hopefully help us out a great deal. Next up, I get the one in at the bottom here on the pistol grip in this case, which I'm hoping that wire hasn't caught on, I don't think it has, no, it wouldn't have happened in that easy if the wire was pinched, because we don't want to pinch these wires guys, I've had that happen before, you screw your screw in and then you get a fault, you can't figure out what's going on and it turns, you've, turns out you've driven a pin or a screw through your uh, through one of your wires okay guys I'll speed this bit up I'll put all these screws in and then I shall come back to you okay right so there we go guys that's the gearbox back together all in one piece hopefully works okay <laughs> um, okay well I hope you found that interesting guys I hope you found it useful and uh, that's basically all I do when I'm cleaning up a gearbox and doing a bit of a service on it like I say now I'll go away and uh, I will clean that inner barrel and check the hot rubber and then hopefully this should uh, be good to go for another few years well until some parts wear out principles are the same if you're changing parts in them um, but like I say, that just shows a point that I want to make, that people will go on about you have to do this and you have to do that, and then that just shows that uh, this one's been running for three, four years, and I've never done anything to it. That's the first time the gearbox has ever been opened on this GNG ARP9, and it is absolutely fine in there. I probably could have left it, the grease was getting a bit manky, they were showing signs of wear, so I've re-greased and cleaned. However... Apart from that, it seemed absolutely fine to me, no problems. So, you can make your own decisions on that one, guys. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. I'll go away and clean my barrel and put this replica back together. Um, but if you did enjoy it, then please do drop a like on there. If you want more videos like this where I take stuff apart, then let me know in the comments. I always respond to a comment. If you want any more content from myself, you can find Rock Bottom Airsoft on Facebook and Instagram. There's photos and discussions and things on there. But apart from that, thanks very much for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.